Welcome back to Square Off. The country came to know Randy Freeze 10 years ago. He was the first doctor who treated Congresswoman Gabby Giffords after she was shot in the head in the Tucson shootings. Now, State Representative Randy Freeze of Tucson wants to follow in Giffords' footsteps. He's running for Congress in the district she once served. Randy Freeze joins us now from Tucson. Welcome back to Square Off. Thank you, Bram. Pleasure to be here. Now, before we get to your, your campaign, your story, I have to ask, the Democratic primary is 16 months away. I know races are starting earlier and earlier, but why announce now? Well, um, there's a lot going on in Washington, right, with the pandemic, uh, serious health care crisis, COVID pandemic, and also the pandemic of gun violence, right? Ten years ago, you mentioned 10 years ago, is when the Tucson massacre happened. And we still haven't moved the needle on protecting society, making sure that we have gun safety measures in place and, and gun owners are responsible. We need responsible gun ownership. So I really feel like my skill set of a trauma surgeon, a team builder, a problem solver can uh, bring a unique point of view to, to Congress. But again, why now? 16 months, that's, that's a lot of time until things really get going. Typically, in the past, folks don't announce till the end of the year before or even the beginning of the, of the election year. Well, as you know, uh, Representative Kirk Kirkpatrick, uh, after uh, many, many years of outstanding service, uh, announced her retirement. And an open seat. An open seat is uh, you know, something that is uncommon, and uh, a lot of people uh, certainly want to uh, give it a shot. And I want to make sure that I, you know, I have thought about this idea in the past and I wanted to make sure that my supporters knew I was, uh, I was ready to, for this commitment this time. And I, I wanted to make an early announcement. And the second district race could be one of the most contested races, more contested races in the country. I should note that uh, one of your uh, Democratic colleagues uh, at the Capitol, uh, Kirsten, Kirsten Engel, Senator Kirsten Engel, has announced she is running as well. More are expected to follow. There's another quirk here, and that's congressional maps are going to be redrawn by the end of the year, and your district could look a lot different from the one you're in. How much does that matter right now? Well, that's very true. Um, I... I I, I think it, it, I'm running for CD2. I'm running for um, the seat that Ann Kirkpatrick is retiring from. I, I'm well within the district. Uh, it could very well be the, the district changes, but I'm comfortable that uh, here in Southeast Arizona, uh, things will look hopefully similar. But if that do isn't the case, I'm still running for the seat. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to make uh, decisions in the future. You said after the Tucson shootings passed that uh, you decided you could do, quote, do more good for more people as a politician. Have you been able to do more good for more people from the floor of the House? Uh, thank you uh, for that question. I, and I like to call myself a policymaker. Um, I'm, I'm very much uh, excited about and driven to create policy, uh, generate ideas, put those ideas forward for the body to consider. And, um, and, 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 and modify to make them either better or more broadly accepted. And I think I have been effective. Um, I, this year, got a gun safety bill to the floor of the House. I got it through a re Republican-dominated committee. I got it to the floor of the House ready for a uh, third read, but the majority decided that they didn't want to put it up for third read. Um, I've got three measures uh, regulating the, the new adult-use marijuana industry and, of course, the medical uh, marijuana industry uh, in the Senate, out of the uh, House without opposition. Um, I'm hopeful to get them to the governor's desk. And let's talk about gun safety because that's been your top issue. Um, here in the state and at the federal level, it's just been absolute gridlock. It seems like there is no horror that can move anyone, you know, off their position uh, uh, on this or just move the issue forward. What's your idea for doing that if you get to Washington? I agree that, that, that people are frustrated uh, that we haven't been able to come to solutions, but I think my point of view is very unique. I am a trauma surgeon. I care for and operate on and, and, and not infrequently save the lives of people that have been shot um, and, 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 other, and other traumatic injuries. So I can bring a very personal point of view and, pre and, and bring, bring people to understand that this problem is pressing. We can't just keep brushing it aside uh, and waiting out the enthusiasm for change associated with every massacre that happens. We must address this problem. And I think I can, again, I, I'm used to working in a team. I put together people. I put forward ideas. Uh, those ideas are uh, modified to where 
people are comfortable. Uh, either we get broader acceptance or, or the concept is improved. I, I think my point of view will spark a new conversation in Washington. In one of your campaign videos, you describe yourself as a progressive. So what kind of progressive? A uh, Bernie Sanders progressive? I, I, I will say that I have progressive objectives, pro pro progressive vision. But I also, I also will take a moderate vote in order to in a, in a, in a, in a, in a incremental way, get toward those progressive visions, right? So it, it's important concept of you have a vision of where you want to go, but you also need to know how to get there. And you, it's sometimes it's not a leap. Sometimes it's a, a, a you know, several uh, intermittent steps. And, and I think that's what I mean by that. Uh, as a member of Congress, you're going to face a lot of litmus tests, and one litmus test right now for progressives, among progressives, is how a candidate, a, an elected official, where that, that person stands on a $15 an hour minimum wage. If you had been in the House or were in the House, would you have voted for a $15 an hour minimum wage? Yes, I would have. I think a living wage is important for our working families, particularly working fa families in southern Arizona. I, I think that we need to make sure that everyone has access to the tools uh, they need to uh, create a, a, a safe home and a successful place for their, th their families to thrive. And I think a $15 uh, hour working wage would be part of that. The second district is a border district in the heart of the Border Patrol's Tucson sector. Where has the Biden administration fallen short in controlling the surge at the border we're now seeing? You know, I think it, it's not just a matter of this administration having fallen short. They've only been there for a handful of months. I think this is a long-standing problem that has been festering and not given the attention it requires. Several attempts have been made in the past. What's happening now is there's too much finger pointing and blaming. Instead of coming together and putting forth ideas and hammering those ideas into something that both sides find acceptable, that would incrementally move toward a solution. There's no way we're going to solve this problem in one week, one month, probably even one term of, uh, of Congress. But we need to start, and we need to start with incremental, meaning, incremental meaningful change. Um, and, and that does not include a border wall. Let's end with this question. Have you talked to Senator Mark Kelly and former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords about their endorsement in this race? Well, uh, the senator is concentrating on making uh, improvements and getting us out of this pandemic and making life better for Southern Arizona and, and all of Arizona, in fact. Um, we have spoken, but he is concentrating on the work he has in front of him in Congress. Would you expect their endorsement at some point? Again, that's a, that's a decision for them. I, I am going to put my head down and do the work I need to do to have a successful campaign and be the candidate uh, in the general and then, and, and then hold the seat uh, for Democrats in, in southern Arizona. Randy Fries, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck. My pleasure, Bram. Thank you.